Welcome to season two of the Age of Motocross. And I'm your host, Jim Chamberlain. Today's episode is all about the tracks of the Maritimes, the loam, the sand, the rocky tracks, the double jumps, the triple jumps, the tabletops, everything you can imagine in motocross is available here in the Maritimes. Sit back, listen to the sound of the rumble of the four stroke and the high pitched whine of the incredible two stroke while I take you on a tour of Maritime Motocross. And don't forget, let's pin it. Welcome to the Age of Motocross. I'm your host, Jim Chamberlain, and in this episode, we're gonna have a look at the newest track on the Maritime Circuit, Mount Calm, Nova Scotia, just outside of Truro. Then, we're gonna talk about the wacky world of motocross, the long drives, the early starts, and the crazy and wacky racetracks. Physical fitness, see these pipes? You don't get them from eating noodles. Practice and practice and training is what motocross is all about. They say that motocross is the second most physically demanding sport in the world. I'm gonna argue that it is the most physically demanding sport in the world. What about crash, boom, bang? I love to stay on my two wheels all the time. That is not going to happen. And boy, it didn't happen to me this summer. Words to live by, we can't forget that. We have a nice segment on words to live by. But first, we're taking you west of Bible Hill, Nova Scotia, west of Truro, Nova Scotia, to Mount Tom, Nova Scotia. Watch and learn. Well, it's 5.30 in the morning. This is a not so glamorous part of motocross. We gotta get out to our car and we gotta hit the highway as quickly as we can. Where's a coffee when you need it? Well, this morning we're all getting ready to load up. It was a little wet last night, but it certainly is uh, part of the course. You know, we have to go in the wet and the dry, but it usually makes the track quite nice as long as it doesn't rain today. We tied it down and I always chain it. I know you can say, well, if you had an enclosed trailer, you'd have no problem with safety of your bike, but I have a flatbed trailer. I put the chain on it, nobody's going to take it, back it against the wall. Add a little cover over it so it's pretty safe and we're ready to go for about an hour and 30 minutes or so. The final stop which is Mount Som, Nova Scotia. I'm sorry for that.
Well, practice is over. I had two very strong practices at a track that I've never been to. Mount Calm is really an interesting track. It's a horsepower track, that's for sure. So I'm going to have to be on the throttle a lot to overpower these 450s. Uh, be thinking out there about what I need to be doing, keeping the bike in top gear and flying around the track, trying not to slow up or keep the RPMs up as high as I can to get that horsepower to the ground. Certainly this is a track that is national caliber. It has jumps that you can launch yourself in the stratosphere if you're certainly a super pro if you want to be. And it's safe for the amateurs if you don't want to be jumping that high. Like guys like me, they're safe landing areas and that makes it really good. The track has excellent uh, surface. There's a lot of, uh, of tacky soil to get through. Yet in certain areas it's challenging with loose uh, loamy uh, berm type material which you can blow through if you're not careful so certainly this is a thinking man's track but those 450s are certainly going to haul their butts out there they're going to move quite well and I'm going to have to be on the throttle in order to keep with them. That was Mount Tom, arguably the best track in the Maritime Provinces. Now that's just my opinion. When we come back, we're going to look at something that happens in the gym every day. Arm pump on a motocross track, that's not something you want to have. Stick around. What separates the also Rams from the top five racer? Physical fitness, being in top physical shape. And how's that come? You cannot beat anything besides practice, practice, practice. If you're in top shape because you're out on your bike, the results will be there for you. Get on your bike, get comfortable, know how your bike works, and ride as much as you can. Physical fitness will lead you to the top. Let's have a look. I'm at my practice, secret practice location, top secret. It's in a little field at the end of a sand pit. I don't have the biggest track in the world, but I've been using it for a number of years and the track has gotten steadily rougher and rougher. That's how I prefer my track, rougher and rougher. Anybody can drive along a smooth straightaway. Quite frankly, anybody could jump over a jump. It, it, certainly there are some techniques involved in that, but the biggest part is what kind of fitness you have in respect to handling the bumps. It's very difficult or very hard on the, the arms and the legs, especially the arms. And a lot of people get what they call arm pump. An arm pump is a, 
is where the blood does not escape the, the muscles in the forearm fast enough. And they, it almost as though they get trapped in there. And what is not being removed is what they call the lactic acid. And the lactic acid is what makes your arms feel as though they're going numb. Uh, you can't grip your handlebars properly, and this is the beginning of, of what they call fatigue. And the only way to beat fatigue is to constantly or regularly train. And uh, talking to some of the pros in the region, they, they watch the up-and-comers who are not spending near enough time on their bikes. And what happens is either it's arm pump or the concentration disappears later in the moto and we get spills and, and that's where riders start to get hurt. So I spend a lot of time practicing on different things. And, and again, I'll, I'll go 20 minute moto, 15 minute moto, 10 minute moto, depending on the heat. And I practice a number of particular skills. What I try to emphasize more and more to use the power and the lightness of the smaller bike that I have is I try to practice my entry and exit of corners. I practice long sweeping corners where you have to weigh your pegs and I practice right-handed and left-handed 180 degree corners with berms, banks, and without it. So I have all of these types of things on the track so I can practice getting it in the right gear, making sure my power band is in the right location, checking my braking points, understanding how not to lock up my, my rear wheel or my front wheel, if so be it. And I practice this over and over and over again. I don't have to stay out in 30 degree heat for 30 and 40 minutes to practice. I'll practice for 10 minutes, come back, and sit there while I'm having a drink of water, I quite often will sit and think about it. What I did, what I did wrong, what I didn't like about that turn, why it went smooth, so I can improve upon doing it the next time and trying to constantly get better. 50 years of age doesn't mean I can't learn how to get better at this sport. It doesn't mean I should have learned everything there is like any other sport. Uh, you're going to get better only by practicing and I hope everybody gets the opportunity every week between motos not to just polish your bike and wait till Saturday and Sunday comes but to get out onto the track and practice, practice, practice. Whether it's Saturday or Sunday, race time. You're on the line, you're ready to go. Mount Tom is no exception. A little different here this week because this is a very horsepower needed track. I have a bit of a smaller bike, so I had to be on the gas and had to be coming out of the corners a little faster than my 450 brother who had far more horsepower than I did. So I really needed to work hard if I wanted to keep ahead. Now, of course, we all have arch enemies, and I had my arch enemy who I kept looking for on the track. Where was he? How do I stay ahead of him? What do I need to do to keep my point standing current or to move ahead? That's what racing's all about. Mount Tom was no different.
Certainly moto number one was quite a challenge with those long, long uphills, long downhills and sweeping corners being a little bit out horsepowered was certainly a detriment to finishing the race where I want to, but in the end I was happy. I gave it my all, which is all I can ask for. I worked hard, battled the people I should have battled, my arch enemies. It was a great Moto 1. How do I describe Moto 2? This way. Disaster. Disaster, disaster, disaster. I had a great start. My arch enemy was right with me. He passed me, I passed him. And this is what I live for every race day. And I really don't care if it's in 21st place or third or fourth place, but I'm gonna battle with somebody. And this was the biggest battle I've had in a long while. And we passed and repassed, and he was close behind, I was close behind to him. I looked for his weaknesses, he certainly looked for mine. With about three laps to go, I actually pulled a couple of bike lengths on him. That means I was about 20, 25 feet ahead of him. I could coast, I could relax. Big mistake. On one of the long straightaways, fourth, fifth gear, top speed, the back end of my bike decides it wants to pass me. That's not something you ever want to see on your motorcycle going around 45 or 50 miles an hour. You don't want to see the back end of your bike ahead of your front end. So what happens? An instantaneous interpretation of Superman. Off I go into the great wild beyond. Well, when you're 50 or something, things don't always go as planned. So the ground is a sudden stop. And of course, when you're in your 50s, you don't bounce back like a 21 year old. Result, broken ribs. That was the summer. I had a really, really great push. And I must say, I thought Mount Tom was probably the best track on our circuit. I don't blame the track for my spill, I blame myself. A lot of younger drivers will say, you know what, the track was too bumpy, the track was this. Everybody has to race on the same track, nobody's any different. I just went faster than I think I was capable of going, all because I wanted to keep ahead of my enemy, my rival, the end result wheeling down the track and two broken ribs crawl back to my truck load my bike and go home and hibernate for most of the summer c'est la vie as they say that's more Now it's time for a break. When we come back, words to live by. Welcome back. A segment we added this year and I'm very proud of, we call it Words to Live By. Now people have asked me over the course of the years, it's been 38 years, I know I've said it before, but it's been 38 years that I've been racking my body at this sport and people have asked me, why do I continue racing motorcycles when I should be getting ready to retire? My wife asks me the same question all the time. Well, motocross is a rather interesting sport. It's taught me a lot about life, believe it or not. Now one of the things that there are a number of major issues in motocross, like any other sport, that makes you a better person in life. Now you could turn this over to hockey, you can turn this into soccer, but I think there's unique characteristics in motocross that really assist you in your walk through life. And I, I think I'm a better person 
because of my racing. Now, as I said, my bones are still working, so I'm certainly a better person because I'm still moving around on both legs. But the things that I've learned in motocross are, are something that, you know, it's a life lesson. Let me give you an example. Physical fitness. Like any sport, you will only participate as well as the level of your physical fitness. Now, you may think you're in shape. At a hockey game, you may think you're in shape, but you'll notice it in the third period. In a motocross track or on a motocross race, you'll notice it in the last three or four minutes. Exactly how well you perform. Get someone to film you while you're in your last three minutes. Watch where your elbows are. When you're at the beginning of a race, your elbows are high, positioned properly. At the end of the race, your elbows are down. Why? Lack of physical fitness. So like any other sport, and like any goal in life, you have to be focused, physically ready to challenge the entire goal from start to beginning. Motocross has taught me that. Now besides physical fitness and, and uh, the ability to stay in shape or being in good shape, I also learned a number of very heartfelt things about motocross. And one of the big things is I learned about sportsmanship. Now any sport can do that, but motocross does it as well. I learned about winning and losing. I learn how to be gracious. I learn not to be a crybaby when I lose. I talked before about my magic finger. I learn not to point at other people, not to point at other things, because three fingers are pointing back at you. When you lose, when you're not successful, analyze what you did wrong. So I learned that life lesson, and it helped me into life. I learned to analyze my mistakes. I don't point fingers at other people. I learn to look at what I did wrong and I try to improve it for the next race. Life lesson. You did something wrong in life at your job. You didn't do something the way you wanted it to be. Blame your boss. Blame your coworkers. Blame yourself. Sit down without putting the negative spin on it and say, what can I do differently next time to make that situation better? Where did I learn that? On the motocross track. I can't take a certain corner properly. I'm going to study that corner. I'm going to watch the professionals. I'm not going to say, oh, the stupid promoter, he didn't make a good corner. This is a horrible corner. No, I'm going to say, I have to go around that corner like everybody else. I'm going to look at how the pros do it. I'm going to study tapes. I might read a magazine and look at new corner techniques, but I'm going to work on analyzing my errors and try to make them bigger. That's a welcome skill that motocross has provided me. Physical fitness, focus, and analytical mind are very good components of the motocross world. Well, that's another show. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm your host, Jim Chamberlain. And even though I can't pin it, I'll be back next year to race, but I want you to pin it.